Hello friends and welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road. I'm about to hop on my Norden, go up over the mountain to Bend to spend a weekend learning how to ride my motorcycle better and just enjoying the beautiful Central Oregon countryside with our friends from Ride Adventures. <laughs> I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy, so please consider subscribing. I'm headed over the mountain to Bend because I'm going to spend the weekend with Ride Adventures doing one of their training expeditions. But the point of this weekend's expedition, it's going to be two days of riding, is training. So it's not just go see the sights, although that's a big part of it and that's going to be awesome, but it's actually about learning to improve your skills. And I just really think I'm at the point, uh, especially after having done the Washington BDR, just really realizing that I'm at a point where I could really use some coaching. I think I've maybe reached the limit or getting close to the limit of what I can self-teach myself, and I know I have bad habits that I've built up from being so self-taught, so I'm really excited to get some coaching from the expert instructors at Ride Adventures, and they just happen to be here in Oregon, right over the mountain in Bend, about two and a half hours away. So we're going to ride over the mountain this morning. I'm going to take a back way from Sisters to Bend and see some of the countryside, uh, and then I'm staying in an Airbnb. I got this really cool Airbnb. I can't wait to show you guys. It's like a trailer outside on a farm, so that's neat. And we'll spend the weekend meeting Tyler and Eric and all the guys from Ride ADV and all the other guys. It's not just me. It's going to be a group of us that are getting some training and doing some riding together. And of course, I will link Ride Adventures website in the description if you want to check out one of these expeditions or their other awesome tours for yourself. They even rent motorcycles, so you can come from anywhere in the country, rent one of their bikes and do this thing and see beautiful Oregon. So we're up here near Three Creeks Lake. One of my favorite places on the planet. We're gonna take a back road into Bend. I've never actually ridden this, but I hear good things. Some interesting sandy riding. Lots of nice water bars to air off of though. Kind of fun. Obviously I've never been here before, so we're just taking it easy because I'm also by myself, but I've got a track. It's part of actually uh, Oregon BDR Route 3, the uh, unofficial, and there's a back way into Bend on it, so I'm just following it. Definitely finding some sandy spots, and you guys know how much I love sandy spots. So much. Dude, sand is stupid. Oh, that's both wheels off. This thing jumps pretty well. Okay, I didn't want to jump and land in the sand, but I did. So that was fun. Ooh, there's a friendo. DRZ. Yeah, I'm out of shape. It's only been a month since the Wobder, and definitely this was a good warm-up today for the rest of the weekend. Because I haven't been riding much, we've been moving. Not a terrible view, huh? Not terrible. We'll take it. The timing's going to be perfect, because I can check in at 3 uh, at my Airbnb, and it is 2.43, so we're definitely going to be getting to bend just after 3. Oh, did I pick the sandiest line, or what? That was fun. Can't rest on your laurels, kids. Stuff gets sideways sometimes. Even on these four-lane highways. We found the pavement. Lots of people swimming. River. That's fun. I forgot to hit the button, but here we are at our Airbnb. It's this really cool converted trailer. Uh, it's supposed to be awesome in there. So the pictures made it look really cool. So there's a horse. So, you know, if I need someone to talk to, I can talk to a horse. But uh, let's go inside and see what the air conditioning situation's like. What's up, horse? This is it. Wow, cool. It's fancy in here. Neat. This was uh, about the same as a hotel, and it is a lot more private. For sure. So the owners of this Airbnb obviously have horses. There's one over there in the yard and they take them places. So this is actually a horse trailer slash camper and they just rent it out in their backyard to Airbnb when they're not using it, which is actually genius. So I'm gonna take you on a tour. It won't take very long. That is the bed uh, up over where the fifth wheel hookup is. And then panning down, this is the living area slash dining room. Tiny little table. There's a sink, microwave. This is the bathroom. There is a full shower, I uh, was not expecting that, and uh, a towel, which is nice, I brought one, but nice to see, just in case. And then just panning back around, there's a TV, some free cowboy hats, I'm guessing they're not free, that's a joke. It's very horse themed, as you can tell, lots of leather, and these sort of button 
things like a saddle or like Latigo. Uh, here's a fridge, a little chair, and that's it. That's the whole thing, so. Pretty cozy, the air conditioner's going, and that's what I wanted most. That's why I decided to stay in an Airbnb instead of camping, because it's supposed to be hot, like 93 tomorrow, and I just have to sleep at night, so. I thought it would give Airbnb a try. I'd never done it before. This is kind of a cool place. So I'm gonna head into town to Spoken Moto. Spoken Moto's like a coffee shop, bar, restaurant. I've never actually been there, but they're doing a meetup tonight for all the guys that are coming to pick up the bikes they're renting. And it's just a good chance for everybody to kind of meet each other and have a beer or something. Well, my GPS gave me bad directions because this road is closed. See the gate down there? They tried to bring me in that way, so I had to navigate my way around. So I forgot to turn my camera on when I pulled in, but here we are at Spoken Moto. Nice little spot with the motorcycle only parking, which is what I'm after, you know? I see the fellas. What's up, gentlemen? Yeah, I recognize this How are you? How are you? Man? How are you? Nice. This is Keith. Well, Keith. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Howdy. Uh, yeah. Howdy. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to so I'm leaving Spoken Moto, and there are three deer in the parking lot. Look at this. Do you see that? In the parking lot. We're down here in the major shopping area and bend two fawns and a doe well you don't see that every day in the middle of town you actually do if you live in bend or at my house but three deer right there back at the trailer there's a lovely sunset behind me you can actually see it well i'm gonna enjoy mr puff puff and a beverage that i picked up at 7-eleven settle in and get ready for a day of writing and learning tomorrow with the boys Met most of the guys tonight. A bunch of cool guys. It's gonna be an awesome trip. So I've got to be in the morning. And it's gonna be awesome. So good night. See you in a while. Here we are at Spoken Moto. Like the 500 X's are already here. Oop. So we're meeting up here this morning at Spoken Moto, as I mentioned. There it is. And the bikes are rolling in and the crew is rolling in. We got a good selection of adventure bikes. A couple Africa Twins, Tenere, got an XR, some BMWs. The 500Xs are here. So I'm here with Eric. He is the owner of Ride Adventures and the madman behind this whole endeavor. And uh, he's not gonna be riding with us sadly this time, but he will be up there with us. So you'll see him. You're gonna help with the filmmaking part. Yeah, we're doing a little video grab today out there and uh, I'll be out there as well assisting the instructors. So if you haven't watched Ride Adventures videos, you should, cause I, I've actually rewatched a bunch of them before I even came out here, cause I've learned a ton. But Eric's the guy in the videos making it happen. I'll link that channel for you. But uh, you wanna just talk a little bit about the other thing or what all Ride Adventures does? Yeah, I mean, it's a 12 year old company that started doing tours and rentals of motorcycles down in the Andes Mountains. And that evolved into doing stuff in Southeast Asia and Southern Africa for a while there. Um, we're in Europe and of course, you know, here only three years ago, just before pandemic, we started our rental operations here in North America, which means we do mostly the Pacific Northwest around Oregon where we're based. And then for the winter, we head down towards Southern California and Arizona and we run Baja too, up and, all, up and down Baja from San Diego to Cabo all winter long. So we go as the seasons go. So people can come, they can just rent a bike from you if they want to explore the area on their own. They okay. can take a tour with you and rent a bike. They can bring their own bike and take a tour. Absolutely. They can bring their own bike, take a class. They can rent a bike, take a class. Basically whatever you want or need. A la carte. <laughs> and, and if you want to come to basically one of the best places to ride in the world, which let's keep that a secret because I don't want it getting out, but Bend is the place to do it. It's the reason why I keep coming back over here. But I just want to say thanks for this opportunity, man. I'm stoked and, I'm, and I need I need coaching. So I'm excited to get it because I know I have built up all these bad habits that I need to, I need someone to tell me to stop doing that thing, man. Always good to get back to some of the foundational skills and again, hear other riders' perspective on it. So it's, yep. uh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a good group. So I'm stoked. Thanks, man. Yeah, you bet. Glad you're here. You don't want me filmed? Just let these guys know and they'll, they'll blur you out. Yeah, filming is really rude, especially when yeah, people yeah. haven't. <laughs> like, God. So, get it uh, together. Rude, yeah. Anyway, my name's Keith. This is, hold on. Jeff. Jeff, will you guys introduce your own self? <laughs> uh, I'm Ken. Ken. Ben. I'm Ben. Ben. Mark. Bob. Bob. Oh, Sully. 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 Nikhil. Nikhil. 
and Colin. Colin. Ah, I got him. Starting off with the slow race, and if anyone beats Tyler in the slow race on the Africa Twin, they get a free beer. So that's quite the incentive. But this is how they evaluate kind of where we're at in terms of our slow speed skills. So this will be enlightening and entertaining, hopefully. I'm in the second group, which is where I'm not doing it right now. See, it's harder than it looks. Only two of us raised our hands when we said we had any dirt experience. So this will be really good for them this weekend. I'm excited. You're going to be amazed by how much better and more confident they are by the end. I just know it. Hopefully me too. Okay, now it's our turn. This is not something I pride myself on being good at, so we'll see how we do. Okay, group two. Dude, I'm losing bad. I'm second from last right now. It's okay, we just gotta make it. Oh, f Oop. Ah, gotta try to get fancy at the end and blew it. Blew it. Dude, you were so far behind me. I couldn't even see you. Well, I got my ass kicked, but that's okay. We're here to learn, see? So we're going to head over towards uh, Pemelo Reservoir. Abrupt, bad, smooth, good. Everything you want to do is smooth. Your front tire might slip out from under you. You're not giving your tire a chance to, uh, to get traction. If you're turning abruptly, you can also lose traction. Abrupt is just bad. There's nothing good about abrupt, so smooth is good. We're going to be smooth on our brakes, smooth on our throttle, smooth on our clutch. That's kind of what we want to keep in mind always, uh, especially right here on the gravel this is simple gravel it's not thick so we're on to some gravel beautiful beautiful backcountry scenery what a great place to learn to ride a motorcycle i just love it up here you can't see the mountains right now but the three sisters are right there we got broken top we got mount bachelor it's going to be gorgeous views all day up here i'm guessing so this is just an introduction to gravel so we're starting out slow it's an opportunity for us all and particularly the guys that haven't ridden gravel much or at all to practice braking and accelerating and get a feel for gravel and just that wobbliness you know that you feel when you're on gravel that's really sketchy at first you forget about it once you get used to it you kind of don't notice it but uh for sure it is uh, something that takes a little getting used to and so there's really starting slow it's kind of like the msf course you know people are always like i don't know how to ride a motorcycle i'm going to be embarrassed at the msf course and i'm like no 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 that's what it's for like you literally start out with the motorcycle off just duck walking it to get a feel for it and it's kind of like that here on these courses and they tailor it to your ability level but we have about six guys that have never ridden off-road at all and so we're really starting slow and giving those guys a chance to get comfortable build the fundamentals i think the instructors are doing a great job of kind of meeting people where they are and full disclosure they let me come take this class for free because I'm making a video, but uh, you know I've worked with the Ride of Interest guys a few times. They're all good dudes. They're all out here trying to spread this love and joy of the sport that we enjoy and help people do it safely. And so if you're looking to get started in the world of adventure riding, uh, but you're, it intimidates you, I, taking a class from these guys is a great way to do it, especially because you can come out, rent a bike. You, don't even, you can fly out here and do the whole thing. That's, there's a guy here from New York. Shout out to Sully. Great opportunity to come ride Ben, meet some cool guys, and you don't even have to ride all the way here if you don't want to. Okay, commercial over. For now, but I'm just impressed, is all I'm saying. So when you're standing, you got two main foot positions. One is on your, more on the balls of your toes. That gives you a very good attack posi position, very nimble. It gives you a lot of flexibility in your ankles, more suspension with your ankles and your knees and your hips. That's the best attack position. It's your most athletic position, but over the long term, it's, it's tiring because it takes extra effort and strength and muscle to hold your body up by your by the balls of your feet so on your normal stuff if you're standing up uh, you can stand a little bit more in your arches it takes away a lot of that, that flexibility in your ankle but it also is more comfortable and relaxing so this is tumalo dam or it's an old dam earthen dam looks like no water at the moment um, but that's pretty cool see the remains of some sort of structure 
Looks like it's been shotgunned to hell by the elements or people. So this is the old dry reservoir. It's gorgeous out here. Damn, so cool. I wish I could stop and take a picture when I'm learning to ride motorcycles right now. You can ride down there, there's a road, sweet. So Tyler's gonna demonstrate the skills we're practicing right now. And then we're all gonna come down this road and do it one by one. See, he's doing it there. He's just leaning the bike under him, see? Easy peasy, and then accelerating, and then braking. Yeah, okay, now we all get to do that too. Good, you can see people's just position improving already and their confidence too is quick. These guys, most of them are brand new. You see, this is why I wanted to get this coaching because I was getting all cocky and screwing around, throwing the bike around and I'm doing it wrong. But I don't know that because no one's ever told me before. So this is really good, really helpful because I am turning the bars and I'm not supposed to be. I'm just supposed to shift my weight over like this. Yeah, I was totally doing it wrong. I'm doing street things because I've never actually been dirt trained. And that's why I always crash when I try to turn sharp on the dirt because I turn my bars too much. See, I'm learning right now. Free sh Hey, will you help me load that stuff on my bike? I need a bunch of free gas cans and garbage. That's littering. That's a dog bed. Sick. You know, when you're standing up and you feel your bike doing all kinds of weird stuff, the, the way you counteract or correct that is shifting your body weight. It's just a little bit of a shift of a body weight. To, if your bike starts to go this way, just shift a little bit to the left side and it's going to correct your, your bike. A new drill here, change of pace here. Start out in first gear without using any throttle. Um, so what that's going to be is just a really slow, and this is to practice that friction zone, finding the friction zone of where your clutch engages. We are practicing taking off in first gear without using any throttle, which is, I've never done that before on this bike. Okay, well, that was easier than I expected it to be. I've actually never even tried this. Huh. Okay. Second gear. We're doing it. That's good. He wants me to try third gear after this. I'll try third going downhill. Why not? Harder than it looks. Third, third, it's not dead yet. Definitely lugging though, it doesn't like it. Does not like it. That's something. So that's where I can get going, but if, as soon as I let the clutch all the way out, she's chugging. All right, third gear. Hard part's getting fast enough to not kill it when you lug it. Hey, oh, that's fun. That's good clutch control technique. It also teaches you patience, because uh, it takes a while to get up to speed to where you're not killing it. Cone right here, we're going to go to the outside of it, do a sharp, slow turn around it, and then outside of this one, and then back outside that one, and then just weave back and forth, and then when we get to the end, we're going to be, make a big right turn in this next set of cones. It's going to be, uh, you're, we're going to be weaving in and out of them, but, but they're going to be quicker ones. A common thing that beginners do is they're trying to steer around these rocks with their steering wheel, and it's awkward and uncomfortable and makes you lose your confidence. So those are going to be the boulders and it's it's a shift of the weight. If there's a boulder in front of you, you step step to the left of it and your bike's going to go around it. You step to the right, shift your weight to the right and your bike's going to go out. So I'll give you a sample.
you know, this is one of the things I was worried about the most because it's what I feel the least comfortable with. So it's a good practice. And I got to say, I really admire these guys for just obviously, you know, being unsure, but just trusting the process and jumping right in and making it happen. not talking about myself in this instance definitely go tighter than this so try to lean the bike in more and do more body shift and get the more lean angle you can put into the bike the sharper it will turn okay less less bars more lean Now we're headed up to Three Creeks Lake for, to lodge for lunch. It's gonna be bomb. I love it up here. Uh, I actually rode up here yesterday, if you guys remember. One of my favorite spots on earth. What an amazing place to learn, you know? If nothing else, if you learn nothing, you get to ride some of my favorite country. Three Creek Lake, 6,500 feet. Isn't it beautiful? Not a bad place for class. Can we have class outside today? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. So, how are you feeling so far? Fantastic. Yeah? Getting some, getting some confidence? Yeah, it's a good way to start. Smaller bike. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What do you think of our instructors? Fantastic. Fantastic. I agree. I want to see what happens when somebody drops one of their bikes first. <laughs> I'm sure they all jump in and yeah, it's scoop a real it up. Test and, but they've been great so far. Nice. Very cool. Well, you don't take beginners on single track on big bikes? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Come on, man. Come on. He's adorable. She is. She's adorable. Full service here at Ride. They're removing foot peg rubbers for you after fixing your, uh, your risers. If it gets any more complicated than that, I can't help you. So that was lunch at Three Creeks Lake. Three Creek Lake, I think, actually. Pretty awesome. One of my favorite spots. I don't know. I've probably said that 14 times, but we're back on the road with the group. Going to go practice some more skills. So this will be the first real off-road. Plenty of technical stuff for most of these guys. Yeah, there's some stupid sandy crap in here. So, you know, my favorite. Will we be picking up any bikes? I don't know. Man, I can't even imagine when I first started like doing this on the first day I ever rode off-road on an adventure bike. Like, they have spent some serious time building real fundamentals. It's like helping you expand your comfort zone and you have to push your comfort zone to expand it. And they seem to be doing that in, in sort of a safe way. <laughs> it's terrain that they know you can handle even if, you're, even if you're not sure that you can handle it. The sand in particular, we haven't talked about sand at all. It's not very deep, but I definitely feel the sandy wobbliness. You would not believe. Oh, 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 oh. You all right? I got you. I got you. I got you. You okay? You all right? Okay. Don't move. Just give it a sec. <sighs> Good kudos to him for popping back up. That's Colin. Uh, you know, I just worried. Sometimes you, you twist something and uh, you don't know how messed up it is. And you go to stand up and you make it worse. So that's why I was telling him to sit. 
Okay, this is maybe more than most of these guys should be doing because I feel like it's more than I want to be doing. This loose stuff is real tricky. Yep. Yeah. Real tricky. Oh, oh, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. You crash in a good spot though. It's easy to pick up. Yeah. Right. So we run it back down into the track. Look at the view though. Can't beat that. Not with the damn stick. This is what I'm talking about. It is just everywhere. Look at this. Damn, dude. Need a hand? I'm gonna drag it around. Ready? Ready? One, two, three, go. Kickstand. Well, I shouldn't have jinxed it and talked about people falling, so sorry, Colin. I blame myself. But you're doing great, man. Getting up, you keep going. Persevering, you're getting better every time. This stuff is not easy, especially on that big, tall, heavy bike. This is some fun stuff. <laughs> Putting on a clinic back here. That was not nothing, man. Like, I cannot believe you guys that have never ridden dirt before are doing this today. That's amazing. <laughs> Seriously. I'm puckering up up there. I've ridden dirt a few times. How you feeling right now? Tired. Yeah? But accomplished? Yeah. Accomplished. I'm kind of surprised I uh, made it through that last section, so. Yeah, what did you think when we first dropped into this and you started seeing the technical sandy stuff? Sandy stuff I didn't like at all. <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> and you've never ridden dirt before, right? Or not much? No. That's amazing, dude. No. That's amazing. You're Just crushing a little it. street rider. You're crushing it. One final dirt section, and then we're back roading it to Bend. Hopefully off road them the whole way, but this is cool getting to see some new roads. It's been a great day. I actually picked up a pretty significant new technique. I knew I had bad habits because there are just certain things that, that I can't do that I feel like I should be able to do with my level of experience. And I'm, one thing I'm doing wrong is using my handlebars way too much. I'm not steering with, with the pegs, with my weight at all. And so I'm constantly having to shift the direction the handlebars are pointing in. And that has always caused me issues with washing out the front, stuff like that. If, uh, it happened on that Aprilia test ride I did. You know, if you look at all my old crashes from all my uh, my early videos, you can see it, man. And uh, this this shifting or this steering with my with my weight with the my weight on the pegs, particularly standing up, is a game changer because I can keep the wheel pointed mostly forward. Just let the ass of the bike slide around, which doesn't bother me at all. Uh, it bothers me a lot when the front end starts to slide. So I knew I was going to pick stuff up. I knew I was going to discover things that I've been doing wrong. And I'm glad to have picked up such a pretty big revelation even on the first day. So thanks to Tyler and the other guys for helping me figure that out. Nailed it, crushed it. Oh. But anyway, if you, if you see this class idea and you're like, I don't need that, I know what I'm doing. I bet there's something you can learn. And I never consider myself an expert. You know, I know I'm not the greatest writer. I know I have a lot to learn, which is why I wanted to take this class. But I think everybody will find something to learn. And we're only on the first day. Like tomorrow things get a lot more complicated. So I'm, I'm simultaneously excited and terrified about the sand stuff because I don't like sand. Uh, but I've been writing it wrong this whole time, which is a big part of why I hate it. So if I can learn the right technique, that could be a real game changer for me on those sandy sections that I do not enjoy. So that's why I'm excited, but I'm also not excited because I don't like riding in sand. I'm like Anakin Skywalker. I hate sand. It's coarse and rough and it gets everywhere. I mean, it's kind of pretty out here. Kind of pretty. See the horizon is forever, man. I know some people don't think sagebrush is pretty, but I like all natural settings. I like all biomes. Especially when the views go for days like this. It's remarkable and awesome. You okay? It's sand, man. It sneaks up on you. Here, let us help you. I might be a jinx. Everyone crashes right in front of me. We're going to do something dumb. Tyler's invited us to try some single track, so... Why not at the end of a hard day when I'm tired on a 470-pound motorcycle? Let's do it. This is probably stupid.
Yeah, this will be the most heinous shit I've done on a big bike by a mile. A little sandy. Let's use our new techniques. This is like the final exam for today. Oh, he's down. Tyler's down. You need a push? Oh. Okay, or you could dig a hole. All right, he's off. Whoa. Holy sh**. Yeah. Well, I've never done that on a bike this big before. <laughs> okay, okay. Don't get too big for your britches, buddy. One more section of single track. Tyler's very convincing, and then we're, we're going to head back. Yeah, I didn't want to see a steep downhill, but whatever. This is steep. It won't show up on the camera, but pretty damn steep. Oh, and a good climb up the backside. Great. Well, good test of your skills, bro. Whoops. I've never ridden whoops on this before. Not bad. A bunch of them, dude. All right, we're headed back. We're here at Spoken Moto again for dinner. I'm hanging out, there's live music going, so I probably won't film that much. Because you won't be able to hear me, but I just ordered some wings and I'm excited to eat them. And the line for beers is too long, so I'm not gonna get another one right now. Look at these wings. Ooh, this is from a food truck. I'm gonna enjoy this. Also, I have a Ronye, thanks to Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. Keep it classy. That's how it's pronounced, if you're not from around here. Ronye. It's French. Yeah, it's French. Ronye. <laughs> Buffalo is pretty good. Try a barbecue. I have a feeling you're gonna think the barbecue, the buffaloes. Look who's here! John and Brian and Tiffany just up. randomly here at the same place as us because in Bend, if you ride a motorcycle, I guess you don't go anywhere else. No, you come here. just stand up here yeah, at the end right. of the day. So, you know, it's weird how people that revolve in the same circles end up in the same places. Yep. Kind of because you know, it's not like we planned on seeing each other, but I'm glad we did. Yeah. Absolutely. Good go. to see you, Ben. Yeah. yeah also, vb4080b.org. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I had my the stickers in good company. We started a whole other side. That was a fun evening hanging out with the guys. Had a good dinner. And uh, now I'm back at the trailer. Going to turn in for the night here in a bit. So catch up with you guys in the morning. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Please don't forget to check out part two where we get into the more advanced training. Well, I got some sun today. But for now and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Oh, thank you. Hello, friends. Editor Dork jumping in here to let you know about a really cool opportunity. If you want to attend one of these Ride Adventures trainings for yourself, there's one more opportunity to do that this year in Bend. Their very last training expedition of the year in Bend is September 24th and 25th, 2022. And since this video was filmed, I actually went back and spent a weekend as a trainer with them. And so on this expedition on the 24th and 25th of September, I will be one of the trainers. You want to come to Bend, practice your skills, gain some new knowledge and confidence and hang out and ride with me in one of my favorite places on the planet, I would encourage you to use the link in the description to check out that September 24th and 25th training expedition. You can ride here on your own bike and use your own bike. You can rent a bike from them. All you got to do is get yourself to Bend and come and be a part of the training and adventure. And like I said, I will be one of your trainers so we can hang out and have a few beverages and wings in the evening. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope I get to ride with and coach some of you sometime very soon in the next couple weeks. And do not forget to be excellent to each other. I oh, thank you.